and welcome to the Philly Sports Dish. I'm the one and only big game dame. This is my main man, Do. Philadelphia Eagles, let's just get right to it. Embarrassing low point. Honestly, this is one of the lowest points, period, of my life as an Eagles fan. Um, so let's start with this. Just I'm going to be honest. Come the fourth quarter, I was asleep. I'm going to be completely honest. I just couldn't. What's your overall reaction? When I give you this stat, you're going to know what my reaction is. I want you. I want everybody to think about this. The, old, the Las Vegas Raiders ran 37 plays without facing a third down. 37 consecutive plays without facing a third down. Weren't they the lowest ranked running team in the NFL? Or right at the bottom, rushing. Yeah, I, I, I just feel this way. When you're watching this, how do you stay in the same defense? Like, like, what are you thinking? Like, it's not working. They're marching. They started running plays for the fullback. That's how bad it got. Like, yeah. they were, they panned into David Carr, Derek Carr. And he was laughing. Yeah, and this is giggly. To answer your question, this is what happens when the coaching staff has an inability to adjust and inability to change. They're shell shocked. They have no idea what to do. But you know what? And and Sirianni. It's deeper than that. And when you don't learn from your mistakes, this is what happens. We talk all the time about the process, right? This Eagles coaching staff, they have no veteran coaches. There is no coach to say, hey, this is what you do. Here's a suggestion. There is no former head coaches. No former play callers on either side of the ball. And that goes back to the owner. So, like, why would you do that? Like, you're putting them in an impossible. When do you ever see a team hire a coaching staff with no experienced coaches? I mean, even when Doug was here, because Doug, quote unquote, had a he lack had of a experience. great coaching staff. Yeah, they he had sports. Uh, D. Filippo, who was a great quarterback guy, Frank Reich, who came in, like, the established people. And because, and I, can you name another coach besides the offensive defensive coordinator? Um, um, no, it, exactly. I mean, <laughs> like it's it's and you know, and this is the thing, and it comes back to what we were talking about last week when you're somebody's guy, mm-hmm. because all of these guys are on this roster by recommendation. Mm-hmm. They knew someone, and I'm gonna keep drumming this every time they get embarrassed. But meanwhile, you had someone like Deuce Staley. Now, listen, the only thing, like, as when I try to wrap my head around what's going on, the only thing that makes sense is they want the number one pick. Like, Oh, they're going to get it. That's the only way this makes sense, where they said, you know what? There's no way that he can win. We're not going to give him the tools. We're not going to, like, this season, the plan had to be we're going at the number one pick in the draft because that's the only thing that makes sense at this point. You know what I think it is? I think it's post Super Bowl. That disaster we saw post Super Bowl where all of those people in the front office and like you said, it it was a perfect storm of everything, the right players, the right time, everyone mm-hmm. peaking in their, their in their career. Plus, I mean, Doug could be Barry Switzer to that coaching staff was so strong. Mm-hmm. That Super Bowl run. Jeff Laurie thinks he had something to do with it. How he thinks he has something to do mm-hmm. with it. And all of these outside forces think they had something to do with it. And it's like, look, everything came right for y'all. Okay? Lori thinks at this point, now, well, I can just hire, I can just put this staff together and I know enough. I've been doing this. It's like at the end of the day, Jeff, you're not a football guy. I don't care how many people you talk to. It's like you needed to be doing this from day one. You're the type of owner where you need to fall back. No. You need to fall back and put the right people. You just can't do this because you're that incredible. I'm I'm very interested to watch this season play out because, you know, our mantra has been all year, let's let it play out. But at this point, it looks like he's just, they're just overmatched. Did you hear the post-game press conference when Sirianni's, they're talking about, well, you know, one of the reporters asked a question. And the question is about the defense. And he's like, oh, well, you know, like, I don't really concentrate on that. I'm the offensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. You're the head coach. <laughs> Just, you know, like, you're, you're calling the plays, but you're the head coach. 
like his it's it's like his mentality where it's at and these people are completely shell-shocked they don't know what they're doing they were hired because they were someone's guy mm -hmm. frank reich's guy the eagles really wanted frank reich but they couldn't get him because he had a huge huge deal with that super bowl mm -hmm. you know so they just hired his guy meanwhile and i'm going to keep coming back to that you know someone who's perfectly qualified he's been with the franchise but he needs to pay his dues for whatever reason. So he gets cast off to Detroit. Man had a plan. <clears throat> I mean, if that's the case, well, then you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. But I just, I, listen, I just hope you're not right. I just want to believe that they sabotage the season to get a high draft pick and get Carson Wentz numbers off the books. And next year, we're going, we're, we're going in. Like that, that's how I keep it, my sanity. And, but this is where I disagree with you. Coach, coach doesn't know what he's doing. Like, why would you hire a coach that doesn't know what he's doing? You could be putting those ple pieces See, in place to set yourself up for the next coming see, years. I'm thinking, if what I'm saying is right, he gets fired. He's not making. If this continues, there's no way that you can. And Lori's done it before. There's no way. Like, he's going to have to own up to his mistake. Yeah. So, I mean, if that's the case, if he fires him brings an experienced coach, then we can look back and be like, hmm. I, I, listen, I know it's a long shot, but let me have that because that's the only thing that's keeping me motivated to continue to watch this team. I know there has to be a master plan. This couldn't have been the plan. I think this was the plan. I won't believe And it blew up in their faces. I won't believe it. It blew up in their faces because they're, they're the smartest guys in the room. They're the cutest guys in the room. They know more than everyone. I always say this. CD Lamb was there and Rager was there, they would have picked Rager because they know more than everyone. Yeah, well, they didn't take Justin Jefferson, so there you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so here's the deal. They're gonna Eagles fans are gonna get their wish. Best thing that happened yesterday was when Atlanta drilled that field goal. The Eagles would have had a number one and number two pick in the NFL this year. Yeah, because they lose to Detroit. Man, here we go. Yeah, they're gonna lose to Detroit. <laughs> they will lose to Detroit. They're gonna lose to Detroit. They got a coach and Savage doesn't know what they're doing. They're, they will lose to Detroit. The Eagles will not win another game this season. Listen, I, we, we, we got to move on. I can't talk about them. No All right. Well, let's move on to better news. The Sixers. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the Sixers. Um, the latest is the Kumbaya meeting. Yeah. Ben Simmons was finally open enough to finally meet with the players, to actually talk to his teammates. Mm -hmm. And they said some things are ironed out now, but Ben's not ready mentally to play yet. <clears throat> so what do you think is going on here? What's your reaction? You kind of called this a little bit. Yeah, this is the Sixers were the adults. I don't know. I hope our listeners got a chance to hear uh, Daryl Morey. He went on a local radio station this past week to talk about the Ben Simmons situation. And he basically said, you know, we're not moving them. We're not trading them unless we get back what we feel to be equal value. And I was happy about that. So to me, it's the same equivalent as, you know, you're disciplining the child. And I think this is the first time that someone has told Ben no. And him pouting didn't lead to him getting his way. And then what happens ultimately? You know, you, you, you as a child, you know, you still want your parents' love. You, you're going to come around. You, you, you want the things that come with it. So I think what happened was he threw his tantrum. He was upset. He wanted to take his ball and go home, and then to take your ball and go home. And the Sixers, to use an analogy, he's like, no, we're going to take the court down. No more playing out in the backyard. We're taking the court down. You know, you have bad grades, and you can't play. And the tantrum didn't work. And I, I think, hopefully, in a perfect world, I'm not saying that, you know, he needed his comeuppance, but sometimes it's good to be humble just a little bit. And this is a person who's never been humble. Yeah, so hopefully, you know, and then, you know, to see the Sixers, like, that game to see MB say, yo, he our brother. Like to see, like, you know, this is how men is. Like, somebody, you can have a disagreement. It doesn't have to be the end of the world. It doesn't have to be, I, I take my ball and leave now. It can be, listen, as, as they said, Ben said in the meeting, you know, we all made some mistakes. And I always said this when men talk it out, you'll always, if, if you came to me and said, we had a, a disagreement, you said something, I would self reflect too to see what did I do? You know, like, you know what? I could have handled that better. Mm -hmm. I could have did X, Y, and Z. And that's how adults, I shouldn't even say men, that's how adults handle problems. Yeah. You know, and then, then it's water under the bridge. How many times have you had an issue and 
it lasted two, three weeks, and then you have a conversation and it's over. And you're like, we should have had this conversation a week ago, two weeks yeah. ago. And, and the players tried, but yeah. Ben wasn't open to it. Here's the thing about him saying that he's not mentally ready to play that I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. Now, all these years, we see this propaganda that comes out from the Sixers every preseason where he's shooting, yes. and every practice where he's shooting threes. His form isn't that bad, okay? When it comes to a games, he just refuses to. Okay. So there's obviously some type of mental block. There's some mental issues going on there. Then in the after the disaster with Atlanta, you know, Doc, what he says, and then when Embiid, what he says, and then he just turns it off. Like, so here's my question. We can never jump in someone's head, but mm -hmm. just looking at it as a sports fan and a sports prognosticator, is there mental issues with Ben? Just looking at it from where it's like he needs to really clear his mind. It's not about leaving. It's about his mind needs to be refocused and, you know, just put in the proper place. Um I, I see where you're going with it, and it's a delicate subject that you yeah. gotta, you know, tread lightly. What I would say is just looking at things, it's it's obvious that something's not right because to not want to shoot, you know, that just that doesn't make sense as a basketball player. So especially when people are imploring you to shoot, they're begging you to shoot. Mm -hmm. So there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how mentally deep it goes. I don't know if he just doesn't want to look embarrassed. Like, you know, maybe he just thinks he's not confident in shooting in the game and he can do everything else at such a high level, you know, and he got this far. So it feels like I'm not going to embarrass myself. And what I would just say to him is I would just put on a picture of, the, uh, of Giannis and I would say, listen, Nobody cares. Like if you if if you miss, believe me, we 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 will tell you to stop shooting. We will say stop doing this. Like at the end of the day, you know, you just, it's like you just gotta jump in the deep end of the pool. Yeah, and last year everyone was clowning Giannis. Yeah, um, for a lot of the same stuff. And I, I think here's and here's the thing. Now I think this goes back to how we said earlier about nobody never telling him no or him always getting his way. Um, you can't be scared to fail. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't be scared to try. Like if you feel like, oh, so what? We we all feel at things, but I've always noticed like you always seem to regret it more if you didn't try. Like it's okay to try and feel. You can live with it, but when you don't try, you always look back on like, man, if I only. And a lot of people, he gonna look back on this and be like, man, if I just would have shot. If if you if you can't shoot. We'll see it and we'll say, stop shooting. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's a psychological thing where it's like, you know, the best way to cure yourself of a complex a lot of times is just do it. Yeah. You know, if you're afraid of cats, just somebody and, throw a cat in your lap, you know, like, yeah. or and, and I think at this is. point, like, to piggyback off with the mental analogy, I think you just might need like some type of shock treatment. And what I mean by that is you need, we need the teammates, we need the coaches to say, listen, you got to take at least one jump shot a quarter or you coming out mm -hmm. like something like that. Where is this like where he knows, you know, there's no consequences or anything like that. This is what they want from me. Like something like, you know, where we with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or just give him like the old school shock treatment, a little prize <laughs> in his head or obscure <laughs> reference for the week. We can do a little phrenology on Ben, you know, get the big old thing, the clamps out and put him on his head and see what's going on. <laughs> So post a photo of phrenology, how it looks. We're talking to our producer right now. <laughs> All right. So before we wrap things up, mm -hmm. this week, yes. anything that stood out to you? Any shout outs you want to give? Absolutely. To piggyback earlier about what you said about uh, African-American men getting an opportunity. I want to shout out Dusty Baker right now, who's leading the Houston Astros to the World Series. And the only reason he got the job was because the Astros were in a controversy about stealing signs. So what happens in that situation when you, you hire a black guy to come in? <laughs> when, and, when all yeah. hell breaks loose, the Eagles next coach yeah. is going to be a black guy. That's what you do is like, you know, if, if something's going on or if yeah. you want to have a horrible team. Or you, you crashed the economy in 2008. Yeah, you and you, he has the Astros in the World Series. He should have, I don't think the Nationals should have ever fired him. So, Dusty Baker, I salute you. Good luck. 
go get that first World Series ring. Yeah, didn't the uh, Colts coach like win a Super Bowl? Then Peyton Manning got hurt. Oh, so uh, he didn't have Peyton Manning, <laughs> so they fired him. Yeah, <laughs> Jim Caldwell. Yeah, Jim Caldwell. There yeah. we go. Well, actually, they lost. They lost to the Saints. They lost. They yeah. lost to the Saints. And he went to Detroit and did a great job, and they yeah. fired him. And they fired yeah. him. Yeah, it's it's amazing how that works, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So yeah. So whenever there's a fire, can we get help? Is he? Is he I think he's sitting there at home. Yeah. Isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's no Nick Sirianni. <laughs> like, he's no. He's no uh, uh, oh my gosh. Eagles fans, the 1987 Untouchables movie when they're recruiting the Untouchables. And Sean Connery is looking for people to be on the team. And he brings out this one guy. And our producer, he'll put a clip in there and show you guys. We'll give you some work to do, lazy. So he calls him out. He calls this one kid out. And the kid reminds me of Nick Sirianni, where he's like, so or Sean Connery, so why do you want to be a cop? And he's just like, well, because I think it, it's good good to help people and Sean Connery slaps him on the arm and he's like all right kid, get out of here. then he turns to the next guy and he's like that's the next chief of police that's how I feel about the Eagles you had this stuttering gammering person it didn't make sense when you watch the clip this is my obscure reference you had this from the day one with his press conference yeah, these are the it. guys that get the job it'd be good I think I'd be good head coach I I'd throw the ball Mr. Laurie, so sir. You, you did a great job of articulating why he got the job. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, but it's just like, you know, it just, that's why Zach Ertz, and that's my shout out is the Zach Ertz. Longest touchdown in his career. Apparently, all he had to do was get away from here and get away from this culture and get around people who know what they're doing. It's amazing what happens when you're around people who know what they're doing. So shout out to Zach Ertz just because, you know, leaving properly, Ben, you know, like, that's how you do it. I know he wanted to punch Howie in the face. That's, that was the rumor last year. Yeah. And it got really bad. But he's like, you know what? Let's fix this and move forward. And then I can get out of there. And, you know, that old adage, when you see the rats swimming off the ship, yeah. that's the time you should be swimming with the rats. So shout out to Zach for being one of the rats Definitely. getting off the Titanic. Thanks, Zach, for helping us get that ship, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So My Tecmo Super Bowl. Eagles Super Bowl edition got Zach touchdown right there. So, all right, so that's gonna be it. That was quick. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty good. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being obscure, yeah. but that's gonna be it for this week. So, thank you so much once again. Thank you so much for the support. You can find us pretty much on every social media platform mm -hmm. where you find all of your podcasts as well. You can find us. Best shot in sports. Best, you know, throw it back. Philly Listen. Sports Dish. We're serving it to you. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Philadelphia, Detroit. Ugh. Listen, if you're not here, it's the producer's call. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> we'll see you next week. Peace and go birds. Do we really want to win? <laughs> yeah, not you know, I want the number one pick at this point. All right. But still, go birds. Be competitive at least. Watch the kneecaps. <laughs>